Wine cultivation is an old practice and a very successful one. And it's the first thing that you can do to kill weeds that are coming in a field. I'm Klaus Martins. Our farm is in near Penyan, New York. We've been organic since the early 1990s. And we farm about 2,000 acres. So in blind cultivation, what we're trying to do is come out and take those germinating and emerging weeds when the crop is still totally safe. So when we plant corn, for instance, or soybeans, we will observe the field afterwards and I will wait for weeds to come up and watch the stage the corn is at. And I like to wait until the very, the corn is just ready to come through and then take a tine weeder and go through the field uh, with the tine weeder and it will destroy the first flush of weeds. And a lot of people, I think, go too early with that first blind cultivation. And the reason being that uh, if you go too early, you have to realize that when you disturb the soil, you're starting a new flush of weeds. The weeds don't all come the same day. So you've got a few come and a few more come and a few more come. So in order to get good weed control from blind cultivation, you need to wait until the crop is at the last minute where it's not vulnerable to the disturbance. And as many weeds as possible are going to get caught in the action. And at that point, if everything goes right and you're lucky, you can actually get almost complete weed control and give that crop an advantage over the weeds. But again, at, this is after you've done all the cultural practices, or you're going to still be very disappointed in the number of weeds that escape. There are three, what I would call ethical ways to kill a weed, and poisoning is not one of them. So the first one would be desiccation, drying it out. And that's when your tine hits the ground and it separates the connection between the roots and the soil. The second one would be suffocation. You bury the weed and get a rain and it seals in. It'll never come and see the see daylight. The third one is to break the plant so that none of the pieces are viable. If you can sever it in the right spot, it's dead. And when you're doing blind cultivation, you need to be aware of that to know how to set the machine. Because how are we going to adjust a machine or operate it if we don't know what we're trying to do with it? So keep in mind those three ways of killing a weed. When it's extremely dry, desiccation is the best approach. But when it rains constantly and it's damp, desiccation doesn't work very well. Anyone can remember pulling a big weed out of the ground, shaking the dirt off the roots, throwing it down, and it comes back to life because it's damp. But when it's wet like that, suffocation works really well. Because if you get even a little bit of dirt on something and it gets a rain on it and it melts, it'll, it'll actually entomb the plant and that'll kill it. Cutting it comes a little later, and that has more to do with what kind of uh, shovels or elements you've got. But we have to keep that in mind when choosing the tool. So a straight tine weeder, uh, particularly a kovar, which has a coil at the top that allows the tine to move laterally, does a great job of burying. It also does a fair amount of desiccation, but it moves soil sideways. And I've found very good success using a straight tine weeder at that stage uh, with things like corn or soybeans that are just about ready to come through. Another thing that can happen is when it's dry and you cultivate, and then you get a hard rain. And at one point I was getting really aggressive with the burying and having really good luck until one time I buried the crop of corn. I did a really good job of burying and you couldn't even see the corn rows and we had a cloud burst. And the corn fell victim to the same thing the weeds did. I got all the weeds, but I got an awful lot of the corn. So th these are all things to, that we have to keep in mind. Another thing, if you get a rain before the crop comes up and it forms a crust, that crust has the weed seeds in it. And if you can break that crust apart, you can actually desiccate and kill the weeds real effectively. And that's the point where a rotary hoe can do an amazing job, where if you have that mild crust on top and the rotary hoe goes through, it's blowing the crust apart and all the weeds are gone with it. Again, this is all timing, a lot of luck involved. But the more tools we have and experience, the more opportunities we have to take advantage in the difference 
physical differences between the crop and the weeds that we're growing to control them, and I'm lucky. That second flush is going to be at a very vulnerable stage when the crop is finally big enough to tolerate a fairly aggressive second blind cultivation. You want to delay your treatment with weeds with blind cultivation to get as many of the weeds as you can, but still go early enough to not hurt the crop. And then the second time, you want the crop to be as far along as possible so that you're not hurting it so that you can be as aggressive as possible in taking out the weeds. And when that works, you can get 100% weed control if you're lucky, that both of those things happen in the synchronization that you want. The problem is the weather doesn't always read the script. And then you have to use these other principles for how do I adjust what I'm going to do? And I think that's really important to keep in mind. But if you realize what we're trying to do, this whole idea of what is the goal of the weeder? Are we desiccating, suffocating? Are we responding to a crust? that's there that gives us an opportunity to kill the weeds without hurting the crop because when you blow that crust apart, you're just loosening the crop and helping it. So this takes it back to these, what are the ways of killing the weed? And what am I trying to do with the adjustments? And what am I trying to do with the selection of the tool that I'm using?